Welcome to episode two of Building KD Software from Git. So if you haven't watched episode one, I really recommend you do, link is in the description box. In that episode, we prepared our system to build KD software by installing all the dependencies, making a small tweak to Git, and then installing by hand the hard way KD source build. And now we're ready to actually start building stuff. Now, when we installed KD source build and did the automatic setup, it created a config file in our home directory. So I've opened it up here just so we can take a really quick look at it. So it's in your home directory .kd source buildrc. And if you recall, at the end of our task the last time, we had created a source KDE directory inside of our home directory that we wanted everything to appear within. And if we look at the config file, we can see that there's a global section. This is, as you might think, the global options. So there's the install directory. That's what we told it to do. Uh, the source directory. Uh, this isn't where we had told it. Now you can leave it like this if you want it to, if you want KD source build to work from inside of there, but we wanted it to work within source KDE. That's where we wanted to put all the source code and do all the build. The build directory is build. This is relative to the source directory. And so that's perfect because that's exactly where we put our build directory last time. One other little thing, because I'm installing it system wide, I need to make it possible to install things with root. Now by default, KD source build builds things and installs them into your home directory where you don't need such permissions, but it's completely possible. Now if we go to the wonderful KD source build documentation, we go to installation as the super user, there is indeed a command that we can add right here to make it install as root. And I'm using sudo on my system. Uh, how to set up sudo to make this work is a detail that I'll let you figure out for your, your distribution. And it's really not too hard. You can use zoo, of course, as well, um, if you wish. I like sudo because it's nice and simple on my development machine. So we're done. Now KD source build is completely ready for us to go. Go where? Good question. So we need to find something to build. And how can we find it? Well. The KDE community has a site called projects.kde.org. It's actually using a installation of Redmine, which is a open source, free software project management tool, um, Chili project actually, and it, it's, it's really good. I recommend checking it out if you haven't seen it before. So the KDE community uses it uh, to organize and share all the projects that they have going on. So I'm here, I'm logged in. You don't have to be logged in to use KDE projects. And we'll, we'll look at the identity process in, in KDE in a later episode. Um, but you can just come here and even if you're not logged in, use it quite well. Well, we wanna find something to build. So we're gonna go to the projects page. So we go projects, all projects, it loads. And we get a tree of all the different projects that are on here. And there's a lot. So the things under KDE are the packages or the projects that get included with KDE uh, software compilation or KDSC bundles. Uh, these are the things that are usually you know stamped with 4.10 or 4.12 or 5.0 or what have you. And so they're all under here. Uh, the things in extra gear are extra stuff. So some of them like multimedia will f under multimedia will find Amarok and K3B, Caffeine, such well-known things as, as KDN Live, the great, uh, as it says, intuitive and powerful multi-track video editor. Uh, so there's a whole bunch of stuff in here as well. Down below we'll find other things um, such as Caligra and what have you. But under KDE, I thought we would build today uh, an educational app, there's quite a few, called KTouch. It's a touch typing tutor. It's written in QML, it's pretty cool. All we really need to know is the name of it, Ktouch. Now we can go browsing around, we can see what the activity is, which is the last commits that have been made, and this is live. Uh, we can go and see what the repository is. If you remember from the first episode, we did a git clone to grab KD source build. That same command is right here. But all we need to know is Ktouch. Okay, so with that in hand, we're gonna go back to our command line here, and we're gonna do KD source build. Ktouch. 
Now I'm going to bring up Dolphin over here because while we do this, as you've noticed right now, all we have is our build directory that's empty um, and our KD source build uh, directory, which well has KD source build in it. So we're going to tell it go grab KD or grab Ktouch and make it for us. That's all we have to do. Boom. Enter. It's now downloading projects.kd.org. So that website we were just at. And as you can see, it's created a log folder. We'll take a look in there later. Uh, here's the kdprojects.xml. This is the, the file from projects.kd.org that describes all the stuff that you can build. And KD source build uses that to know what to do. So there's our uh, KDE directory. Now, if you remember on when we looked at projects, it was in KDE, KDE Edu, Ktouch. And KDE source build is nice enough to keep that structure on disk here. We haven't done anything. We've just told it, go grab Ktouch. And it has created a Ktouch folder with all of the Git in it, uh, the repository from Git, um, all of the source code, all the artwork, etc. So we'll come back out to our top directory here. So if we grab something from, say, extra gear, we would have an extra gear directory here as well. So we're 100% done installing. That was not too difficult. Build succeeded after 25 seconds. Overall time was 57 seconds. And as you can see, there's 353 files altogether, so not a tiny project. And, and that's it. We've succeeded in building our first bit of KDE software from Git. Now, if I wanted to update it again, all I'd have to do, so say a week from now or tomorrow or whenever, uh, let's say I, I submitted a bug report against Ktouch and the Ktouch developers fixed it and I see it got in my email, great, this bug is fixed. I could just come back and do KD source build Ktouch again. Now, what's really cool is once we've got it set up, we can be anywhere. So I can be in my home directory, do KD source build Ktouch and it goes through the rest of the process for me. Done. Of course, I was very fast because it really didn't have anything to do. <laughs> it took one second, literally. So the next interesting thing to look at is, is the log files. Now, the log directory is inside the directory that we put all the source code as well. So for us, it's SRC KDE. And if we look in log, we'll find log files for each day. And after, it only keeps so many days of log files, and then it starts culling them so you don't end up with a, you know, ever mushrooming patch of, of log files. And there's a latest, which is usually what you, what you want and need. So we come into latest, uh, and we can see Ktouch. And inside of Ktouch, and you'll find this for every piece of software you build, there's a build log, git checkout update, git fetch, git rebase, install. What these are is in each process that KD source build is going through, it creates a log of what's happened. If there's any errors, you'll find them here. Now, when if you're building and you're missing some dependency or something like this happens, it will usually give you the Error, error message, the last error message, right here, so you can see what happened. Uh, to see more details, you can come into the log files, and it always tells you where your logs are that were generated, or you can just go into latest, uh, which is what I often do. So we can take a look at, say, the install log. So I'll open that up, and this will tell us exactly what all was installed. So we can see exactly how that went. Uh, we could open up the git fetch log. So this is what it runs or did run um, to grab the all the new updates since the last time we did it for this package. And it tells us where it put it. So if we go, oh my goodness, where did Ktouch end up? There it is. Okay, very, very easy, right? Well, it gets even easier and more powerful than that. So let's go back to, to projects.kd.org really quickly. And what we find here is, so we have KD Edgy, for example, and it has a whole bunch of sub-projects. Well, there's another example that's like this, and that's the games, KD games. There's just tons of, of games. Um, and there's also libraries in here that they require. Um, how, so Lady Lib KD Games, Lib Mahjong. So going through these one by one by one would be kind of annoying. Also, if new games are added, and Pick Me was one that was added just recently. Um, you'd have to know about it and then go get it. But there's a really cool trick with KD source build. And that is I can just say, 
grab KDE games. So I can, again, from anywhere in my build or my, my file system, I can do KDE source build KDE games. It's going to go through the process again. And now you can see it's building libkd games one of 41. It's going to build the libraries in the correct order. And it knows how to do this because of projects.kd.org documents this. And then it's going to grab each of these games and build them. So after I'm done, I'm going to have almost 40 new games. And if I want to keep up with it, whenever I want to get the latest and greatest from KD games, I just do KD source build KD games. I don't have to do each one individually. And this holds for any project on uh, category on, on projects.kd.org that has sub projects. So very simple to build, not even just one package at a time using KD source build, but dozens even. So there you go. That's our next step forward in building KD source. See you next time.